welcome Leslie today. Um, Leslie Herndon is our speaker for today. She is the Vice President of Operations at Greenscape, a landscaping and horticulture company. Um, Leslie has several certifications, including a bachelor's degree in landscape horticulture from North Carolina State University. Um, she likes to travel. She teaches fitness classes, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, of course, she likes her flowers. So thank you very much, Leslie, for joining us today. Thank you. Glad, glad to have you. And, and one small change, and, and I don't know if I really has talked about it much, but I actually am now president of the company. Okay, awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, so changed it. So just been, I wouldn't talk about it except in, in terms of our discussion today. That probably means something. So, Right. That's great. All right. So I will go ahead and ask the first question. And once again, if you have any questions in between, just go ahead, unmute yourself and ask that. So Leslie, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about how you got started in your career and why you chose that career. Sure. Um, so I would say that I had some really influential um, teachers and earlier on, and then um, my mother also is big into gardening. So I actually was in, uh, got interested in horticulture kind of in the end of middle school and the early high school, mm -hmm. um, went to North Mecklenburg outside of Charlotte where they had a pretty good FFA program at the time. Uh, joined that and, and started working in garden centers in high school. I worked for a garden center part-time, summers, weekends, whatever. Um, then went to NC State, actually um, went in the horticulture program. Um, and I worked for wholesale garden centers, retail garden center, um, interned for landscape companies all through my college career. Um, and then again, my mother is pretty into gardening herself. She actually texted me yesterday and told me she had to move all 70 of her flower pots out of the way so the roof painters could come to the house today, if that tells you anything. So, That's a lot uh, of <laughs> 70. She did not miscount, and that is not the wrong number. She sent wow. me the video to prove it. <laughs> so probably a natural thing. Um, and actually, the, the funniest part is when I graduated from NC State, I actually graduated in December of um, 2001. And, and then I started Greenscape January 2nd, 2002. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been there ever since. But on January 3rd, 4th, and 5th, uh, it snowed like 12 inches, 14 inches that, that January. And I spent three days shoveling snow wow. and getting up at like 2 a.m. in the morning and working you know, really long days. And I thought, I'm just really not sure about this. But 18 years later, I've done a lot of snow since then. Um, <laughs> and I'm still here, so. That's kind of the, the brief synopsis story. That's awesome. So what do you think are the biggest misperceptions that people have about working in your industry? Um, you know, I think just in general, um, you know, the perception of what it is, you know, we do a lot of commercial maintenance work, commercial um, uh, installation work. We used to do a lot of more residential. Um, and so it's just the pace at which that moves and that, um, you know, the biggest thing I've learned as I've gone through my career is it's not just the horticulture side, right? It's the people side. Mm -hmm. And the people side is so critical to your ability and understanding how business works, um, as well as knowing the horticulture side to getting where you need to go and, and advancing your career throughout the industry. Mm -hmm. So what does a typical day for you look like? I'm not sure I have one of those anymore. <laughs> um, I'm sure, I'm sure Justin feels the same way. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I would say for me, no day, no day anymore is typical. Um, you know, most of my job now is, le is just is leading people um, mm -hmm. and helping make decisions or helping people make decisions for their, their departments. Um, so I lead the, uh, our branch manager team as well as our corporate um, accounting and, and HR teams. Um, and, you know, today I'm training a new administrative person um, and then also helping make some decisions on, um, you know, some other, uh, P and L things or accounting things, working in our software system, um, mm -hmm. I help keep that up to date and moving, um, as well as, you know, talking to people about customer concerns and things like that, that we need to do. I literally, right before I, I got, literally before I hit go on the zoom call, I had a branch major who just called me and want to talk about a client meeting he just had and how that went. And so, um, these days, there definitely is not a typical day. I had a lot more routine to my job, my day um, when I was at the levels of like foreman, project manager, account manager. Um, okay. Now, I, yeah, there's not a day that's the same. <laughs> a lot of meetings. <laughs> so when you started your career, what did your typical day look like back then? Yeah, um, so I started at Greenscape as a floriculture foreman. Okay. Um, 
now called technician, but floor culture foreman back then, back in the day. And, you know, the day was very, um, very structured then. I mean, you had a set number of sites you were going to visit that day. Mm -hmm. You were there making sure the flowers look good, doing any kind of maintenance that's required, um, any kind of watering, in this, you know, insect disease control, pruning, weeding, chemical applications, whatever you needed um, to make sure that the flower beds look their best. Um, and so that's kind of what my day-to-day -day looked like back then. And that's what my floriculture technician's day-to-day -day still looks like today mm -hmm. um, and, and, and what they do. Awesome. Do you think that there are any challenges for women in your industry? Um, I think there are, but they're definitely are o totally overcomable and some of them um, in our own heads sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've just, I mean, I've been very fortunate to work for owners who are very open and understanding and very growth focused. Um, and that's really key is to work for good people. You know, I think that's one of the biggest things is, is in the industry as any employee in the industry will tell you is to work for good people. Right. That's the right. most critical decision you're going to make in your career. It's who you work for <laughs> making sure that you like, like what they stand for and what their values and principles are and what the culture of the company is. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really critical moment. And then it's just, you know, I think for me, it's just working hard. Get it done. Um, I don't actually, I mean, I just look at myself not as needing to work any harder than they do, but it's equal to, um, I, I can't expect equal treatment without giving equal treatment. And so I really firmly believe that. Um, and that's really, I think what has made me be successful over the years, um, is that I was always going to work hard and get the job done. Um, and I held myself to pretty high standards and, and I still hold other people to high standards today. And that can sometimes be challenging, but we work through it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I think too, I'm also the person who just never said no to opportunity. Okay. Um, so, you know, if an opportunity came about, I've been very, and Justin will probably laugh about this, I've been very un unlikely to say no to it. Um, that's how I ended up on the board of directors for NCLA right now. This <laughs> um, just didn't say no. And I just went, All right, well, I guess I'll figure out how to add that into my day. Um, you know, but I think that's key is if you, even if you don't know how to do the job, it's like, accept the challenge and figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, at one point I have been, I was a floor culture foreman, they had an account manager quit and they're like, here, you want his accounts? And I'm like, all right, let me go figure out how to be account manager now, you know, and now I got to go figure out how to run crews that run mowers all day long and, and, and do other types of work and pruning and deal with customers. And then our, our safety officer chain, or we had a safety officer mission come open and you want to do that too? Okay. All right. I guess I'll do that too. Um, so I learned how to deal with safety. Um, and I think all those things have helped me be able to, um, be more multifaceted um, mm -hmm. as I have advanced. And so when you get to this level now in my career where you kind of have to know a little bit about everything and right. definitely a lot of people, um, you've had a lot more experience to get you there. And I, the trick to that was just to say yes, you know, mm -hmm. like, all right, I'll figure out how to do that. Um, you know, at least when it comes to challenges at work, say yes to the challenge, figure out how to do it, work hard and, and you will be successful. And that doesn't matter if you're male or female or whatever. Mm -hmm. general, general rule of life, I think, and, and especially in this industry. So a couple of the girls that are online would be interested in doing something like you are doing, and yep. if they wanted to enter that occupation, what do you think are critical skills that they should possess? Um, I definitely think critical skills are, you know, your basic core culture knowledge, definitely. I mean, the things that you guys learn in class every day is super important, the things that your, your instructors are teaching you. You know, become as well-rounded as you can. Um, mm -hmm. It depends on where you want to go long term with your career. If you really want to focus and specialize, then focus and specialize. But just know that that is sometimes going to be a little bit of a limiting self factor over the long term. Um, be willing to accept new challenges and try new things. Um, for me, it was you know focused on getting good at the horticulture part of my job first. Mm -hmm. But then I had to really focus on the people side and the business side. Um, you know, to get where I am today, you, you know, I have to make decisions about money and budgets and people and employment and recruiting and, um, you know, profit and loss statements, um, as well as, hey, my, you know, we have hibiscus dropping leaves at Cameron Village. And I was out there last week going, why I got these hibiscus dropping leaves at Cameron Village, <laughs> you know, to, to building, to planting living walls, to, you know, doing all those things. It's just really a matter of, you know, can you, you know, get your basics down, but then be willing to continue to grow those skills. And a lot of what I did, um, you know, wasn't handed to me. 
you know, I would go at, you know, go read books, go to different classes. I would go to different trade shows. Um, you know, in college I was on the, back then it was ALCA today. It's in ALP teams. Um, you know, I got my plant professional really early on, um, mm -hmm. you know, got my certifications through them. And, you know, while these days, th those are just really good backbones for helping me move forward over the years and gave me that good storm, storm foundation. But I think, you know, as you grow, as you move through your career, you really want to start focusing on the people and the business side of it too, depending mm -hmm. on where you want to go. And that doesn't matter if you own your own business or you work for somebody else. If you own your own business, you want to start that a lot sooner because <laughs> those are really critical skills too. Mm -hmm. Very good. Do we have any questions yet? Okay. I have a question. Yes, please go ahead. What do you think is the hardest part of your job? Ooh, the hardest part of my job. You know what? It's making really hard decisions that not everybody's going to love, um, but are for the best for the direction of the company. Um, and you got to be firm in those decisions and, um, and, and really think through them really hard and think about, you know, benefit, consequence, where does this get us where we're going? Does this fit the big picture? How am I going to explain this to these people who actually aren't going to love this decision? How do I get them bought into this decision? Mm -hmm. um, how do I explain this to where they understand this decision? Um, I'd say that's one of the hardest parts of my, my job um, these days. Hmm. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> okay, any other question at this moment? All right, in this case, I will just keep on going with questions. <laughs> Okay, what advice would you give to a young woman thinking about entering this occupation? Um, I mean, my advice is, you know, study hard. Um, first of all, at school, build that base, you know, build your basic skill sets, you know, and, and journey out into areas that are, not you know, you know, back in the day, it was very historically female in certain roles in the industry and very unhistorically female in other roles, you know, get a good broad base, get both of those sides, you know know how to run retail sales in a garden center and then know how to fix irrigation in the middle of a gigantic hole, you know, in the middle of a soccer field, you know, get a good broad foundation because it will give you a lot more options. And I think that having options is just really critical to you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've ended up staying at the same company for a long time, but that's very, very, very unusual. But that's only because I had options to accelerate my career throughout the company. If I think if I hadn't had that, I probably would not have stayed for as long as I have because um, mm -hmm. I had a very, specific direction I wanted to go and I was pretty driven to get there. Um, but I think, you know, getting those skill sets in place is really key. And then opening yourself up to um, making sure you have lots of good networking relationships. Mm -hmm. Super key. Um, you know, I still, I and mean, there's a reason I'm on this call right now and his name is Justin Snyder, right? <laughs> I'm on this call is because Justin and I went to college together, mm -hmm. you know, and have kept in touch over the years. And you know, served on teams together and did overseas travel trips with our horticulture department in C State together. And then, you know, now serve on the board of directors from CLA together. And those things are all happening and in, in, in both people in the industry. So we can, we use each other as networking referrals and help helpful moments. Um, you know, I think that's a really key thing. And again, I've been out of college, you know, since 2001, you know, quite a while, but that networking connection is held strong for what, years, you know, 18 years, um, and really has helped, helped me, helped hopefully help Justin. Um, but the same thing I could say applied to a lot of people in the industry, you know, the, the horticulture industry, especially in North Carolina is, is a big industry, but it's also very small in a lot of other mm -hmm. ways. Everybody kind of knows everybody or, um, mm -hmm. or has a connection somehow might be six degrees of seven, you know, Kevin Bacon, but it's, right. uh, it's all connected somehow. Um, and so knowing that and, and, you know, maintaining good relationships with as many people as you can and mm -hmm. being careful not to burn any bridges as you go. Um, mm -hmm. And I think being, you know, um, will, willing and open to try new things um, is also really important and helps, help, helps people say that you're willing to like go that extra mile. And again, that's not a, again, that's not a female or male thing. It's a, that's an all employees thing in this industry. Right. Um, that really means a lot to people. Because when you're willing to go, I'll get that, I'll handle that, I'll take that project on, let me figure that out for you. I'll take that. That's how you move forward. It's mm -hmm. not waiting, okay, well, they haven't given me anything new to do today. Um, you know, I didn't get here today because I waited for somebody to give me more things to do. 
you know, I got here today because I asked for things to do. I took for things off people. I grew mm -hmm. my skill set and I myself was so was responsible for my own growth and development. I didn't wait for anybody to give it to me. I didn't depend on anybody else to give it to me. I said, no, no, this is where I want to go. I'm going to do the things that I know I have to do to get there. And I think that's super, super key. You cannot wait on someone else to grow your career for you. Right. You have to go do it. <laughs> um, and if you do wait on somebody else, it's going to be a very long journey and you're probably not going to get there. But right. for me, I, I see that sometimes happening is people just are waiting for, well, I have, they, they didn't tell me to do that or I didn't know I was supposed to do that or this didn't happen. Well, go figure out how you can <laughs> get there, you know, because those are the skill sets that we as employers are looking for. It's your ability to go face that challenge, tackle that new project, pitch in and help out. Those are all, those are the things that we are really looking for when we are looking to elevate people to leadership roles in a company. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. And we try to teach our students that same thing. Like you are still responsible for your education, for your career. You can ask for help and people will support you along the way, but you still have to walk the path yourself. Nobody's going to do that for you. So that's do. a very good point. Yeah. And I think this industry is really good about helping out and, mm -hmm. and people are more than willing to give it to you, but you've got to know kind of what you want and where you, how, you know, and get them to help you get there. Right. Right. Do you think there are any barriers to female leadership? I gotta be honest, no. Okay. Um, I, I, I gotta be honest that I feel like, I mean, I, again, maybe I'm limited, maybe it's, it's because of who I work for, but I feel like it's up to us to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. And by making those right decisions, those barriers just don't exist. Mm -hmm. That's kind of goes back to kind of what I said at the beginning. I made a really good decision on who to work for. And because I made that really good decision, no, um, I will tell you too, I'm probably not the most sensitive human <laughs> person in the entire world. So I'm, I'm very used to working in an atmosphere with all men. Mm -hmm. um, we have some women who work for us, most of them on the administrative side, but I do have um, several women, female crew members, female irrigation technician, um, a female floriculturist, uh, mm -hmm. and a couple other here and there. But you know, I'm, I'm very used to, it's been 18 years of working in an environment where it is, it is very male dominated and I have learned to hold my own without coming, you know, and, and it takes a lot of skill and personal development mm -hmm. relating to people and relating to people as a leader versus a peer. That's a, mm -hmm. that's been a big struggle for me. Um, because your skill sets have to change, you know, you have to develop your, your skill sets differently and, and develop more empathy and understanding and, um, all the things that kind of come along with leadership, which is always a new challenge. But, you know, I just think that it's really critical to make that, like, again, if you're, if you're in a company where, like, they don't appreciate your leadership. Now, make sure, again, it's that they don't appreciate your leadership versus you have an opinion they just didn't agree with at the time and they went a different direction. Those are two different things. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had plenty of instances where I've had an opinion about something and Daniel's gone another direction. That's not because I'm female. It's because he didn't agree with my direction. Um, right. And I think sometimes, like, and I've seen women do this and, and self-sabotage sometimes they'll do that and they'll like, well, it's because I'm a woman. They didn't listen to me. No, the, you, your idea just wasn't the one that we need to go with today. <laughs> um, I don't let myself self-sabotage and self-talk myself down. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's probably why I answered the way I did when you said, oh, there are barriers because, you know, I'm in a position where, you know, I, I lead a, the company and it is all male. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll be the president of NCLA next year. And I think I'll be in the history of either the only the second or third female president we've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I'm like, no, I'm like, no, but I've also been very strategic and very directed on how I do, how I do it. Now I will tell you too, that, um, you know, I made some personal sacrifices along the way mm -hmm. to make sure I could grow my career to get where there is, but I did those of my own self willingness and my own decisions. And that's nobody but me. Um, and so I don't consider them sacrifices really other than they were just decisions I made. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that helps answer your question at all, but I'm very big on personal choice. And so I believe really firmly in that I've made the personal choices to make decisions that have moved around those barriers or avoided them. I don't know if that helps at all. <laughs> Very good. Any questions, anybody? Do you guys like, what's your favorite part of the job? Oh, my favorite part of the job, the flowers still. Hmm. Love it. I love I actually like dealing with people too. You like doing flowers too? Yeah, I like growing some flowers. I'm actually named after a flower. I know. See, that's awesome, P.S. My parents <laughs> should name me after a flower. That would be much more appropriate. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love the flowers. Um, you know, I still actually plant Cameron Village and lead the crew out there 18 years later. 
Um, I do still plan our living walls too. Um, I still design them, plan them, and then supervise their installation, supervise the maintenance on them. And I think that's for me been really critical. And I'm glad you asked that question because you know, as my career has advanced, I have gotten in a position where it's like it's about people and, and leadership and, and, and more financial things and business things. But I've made sure to keep my fingers enough in the thing that kept me passionate about the industry in the beginning mm -hmm. that helps keep me invigorated within the industry. So I love, you know, I got in this industry because I like plants. It'd be very easy in my job today to like never have anything to do with plants again <laughs> um, and just do the other stuff. But I've made really conscious decisions to still go plant Camera Village, mm -hmm. still go do site walks on sites, and just still go um, you know, plant those living walls because I love that part of it. Um, and I want to keep that connection. And I think when you keep that connection back to like that part of it, it helps you make better decisions, you know, um, mm -hmm. with the guys who are actually out doing the work and, and better decisions for customers all those kinds of things that help, help a lot. So I'm glad you asked that question. Good question. So and I do have, I do have 40 flower pots in my own house. We'll just oh, say wow. that. <laughs> That's, how mom's got me, mom's got me beat there. 70s. I don't think we're getting a 70 in my house. Oh, wow. I love flowers, but I cannot keep them alive. I'm just so bad with flowers. Unfortunately, I, I probably, I, I always think they need a lot of water and a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, See, everybody on this call now has a, has a summer summer project is, is give Edithina's flowers to grow in her house. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would love that. I try every now and then, but always die. I, I, I got a tomato plant from our horticulture department last year, and it, it did not make it. I kept moving it around. Maybe that was, that was wrong, too. Next time. This is like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next time I have to ask you, Liz, to come and tell me what to do with it. So I just put it somewhere, it didn't work, put it another place, didn't work. I just kept <laughs> then of course a lot lots and lots of water. So just didn't work out. <laughs> it did not work out for me. No, unfortunately not. Totally understand. Totally understand. <laughs> Are there any women that inspire you? Um, I would say that one of the my earliest uh, horticulture instructors was a woman named Christy Thorn Thornton. <laughs> She's fired now, but um, she was a horticulture teacher in high school. I would say that she probably is one of the most influential women as far as like in the industry that got me directed in the right place. Mm -hmm. you know, she's the one who, you know, got a greenhouse building in North, in North Beck and got us all in there and, and got the class and inspired that, that, you know, more, I think, uh, academic love of plants. Mm -hmm. um, there's several other, you know, women in the industry who, you know, lead nurseries or who run landscape companies who I, I look up to, um, you know, Paige Moody who runs Arbor Enterprises, you know, just great woman in the industry, you know, has really just led really strongly her entire career, owns her own business. Great, great female to look to. Um, you know, Joanne Dewar, who um, is the first generation of Fairview Gar Greenhouses Garden Centers in, in uh, Cary or Holly Springs, North Carolina. Cary, North mm -hmm. Carolina. You know, she still goes to the greenhouse every day. You know, she's in her, wow. her probably in her 80s now. Um, mm -hmm. Loves plants, but she, you know, she, built, she and her, her late husband built that greenhouse back in, you know, a long time ago in, in a time where that wasn't, you know, women didn't lead those kinds of operations. And she mm -hmm. just, she's still there every day. And Joanne is still in charge. Uh, her, her grandson, Brad might be leading the company more these days, but Joanne's still in charge. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd say those are a couple of women just in the industry who I think who have been really good leaders who, um, tackled that and that's why I say you know when it talks about barriers I mean think about you know Joanne she just she didn't see barriers either she's like nope we're making this greenhouse have you ever met Joanne she'll go right through that barrier <laughs> like it wasn't even there uh -huh. um, but yeah so that's a really those are both really interesting people um I think in the industry to kind of look to and look for you know what could happen or what can you can do and and uh -huh. look for the future Great. What do you think about mentors? Did you have a mentor or it, did that help you? What do you think about that? You know, I would say like just throughout my careers, like different managers I've worked with have been, I don't say mentors, but um, very much like examples or coaches. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have, I actually work even currently with a coach um, who helps me like every other week and she, she's really helps me work through you know, understanding people more and, and helps me work on my skill sets today. I mean, you never stop learning. You never stop working on yourself and your skill sets. I mean, she very heavily challenges me. 
Um, so that's a really great thing that I do um, about every two weeks with her. Um, and I would say that like, you know, just my owners in general, I've worked with the current family for a long time and Michael was a good mentor for me and like how you run a business and um, how you, you know, treat customers and treat employees. Um, so that's was, you know, he's pretty influential in my career over time. And then I would even say just, you know, looking back as far as like running a business and some of the basics of how you, you make things successful. I really look back to my dad and, and he runs his own shop, small company. It's not, not any, it's the opposite end of the spectrum. It's really interesting though. He actually runs a sheet metal fabrication company in Charlotte and my sister is pretty much taking it over from him. So okay. neither one of his daughters ended up in very traditional careers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's sheet metal fabricating on a daily basis and I'm running a landscape company. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> we both go to work dressed about the same. Uh, <laughs> There's, there's definitely flat shoes involved. I don't have to wear steel toes anymore. I think she does, but, uh, but I would say like just how you run a business and how you take care of employees and, and those kinds of things. He was probably much more influential in, in me and, and what it takes to like run a smaller business and you know, the dedication and the attention to details and attention to decisions that you make. Um, and you know, that was pretty important for me growing up. Awesome. Um, I have, one more question for you and then I hope everybody else still has questions. So where do we find you on a Saturday morning? Oh, I'm usually teaching aerobics on a Saturday morning. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's um, your balance. <laughs> yeah. That's that. So I have a, a part-time, it's not really a job. You have uh -huh. to actually, really actually make money at it for it to be a job, but um, I do a <laughs> second part-time thing. I've done it actually for almost uh, a little over 10 years. Wow. Um, I teach aerobics on the side and uh, that for me has been really, really, really valuable as I've moved up my career at Greenscape. Mm -hmm. um, I tell a lot of people if I didn't have this, this program in my life that oof, I'd be a lot angrier. <laughs> a lot more stressed out all the time. Uh -huh. Two things, aerobics and unsweet tea is how I get through my day. Okay. Um, ca caffeine. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's it's so good to find that thing. I have a really good support system of um, friends and family. And so usually Saturday mornings, I am working out, teaching class or going to class. I'm pretty good mm -hmm. about my routine on that. Um, and then, you know, Saturday is usually either just basic adulting life things, right? Or hang, seeing friends, going places, doing stuff, um, whatever it takes. I'm an extrovert, so no surprise there, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Staying at home in, in April and May just almost made me go a little crazy. So, no. <laughs> I had to get out. I had to see people. Awesome. All right. Well, questions. <laughs> I have a question. Go. Go for it. Um, what, what is your favorite kind of flower? Ooh, got the hard questions today for me. Dang it. I'm not kidding. That is a hard one. Ugh. Um, I would say right now I'm really into this plant called the shrimp plant. Okay. Yeah. Red shrimp plant. I know. Weird one. What can I say? Really love them. They're a tropical, hot, tropical. They look like little shrimps. So I'm hanging on the tree. Okay. Uh, I got a lot of those. Plant. I have one of those in my house and a couple of those planted at Cameron Village. Uh, I'd say that's probably my favorite one, but basic flowers right now, it's not really a flower, but I would say coleus is a big favorite of mine. You so do so many different things with it. Uh, I like moon. You like what? I like moonflowers. Mm, those are pretty too. Mm -hmm. My grandma has this huge fence around her house, and they always grow on that fence, and it's super yeah. pretty. I know we they're cool, aren't they? Yeah, we also have this huge shelf of like just plants. Yeah. It's right above my computer. Oh yeah. Desk, all the way over there. I see a little bit coming over there. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, you know, grow lots of plants at your house. You know, um, mm -hmm. if you want to be in the horticulture industry, you got to love plants, right? You got to have plants at your house. You got to have flower pots. You got to have moon vines on your fence. You got to have a vegetable garden. Um, you we know, have you a huge vegetable garden. Yeah. That's I'll super important. Yeah. You know, and you can learn so much about how plants grow from a vegetable garden. Oh, so helpful. So much about your life, and and you, and and you get to eat it when you're done, even better. Right. We actually just got our first watermelon today. Nice. Awesome. Was it sweet? Yeah, it's sweet. Yep. <laughs> See, I don't know. Yeah, you, I, it's so cool about vegetables too, because you can grow, you can learn like exactly what 
it takes to like give that vegetable sweeter or make it right, you know, go through faster or what it needs to be fertilized with or what do those tomatoes need? Kind of scary place to experiment. Mm -hmm. yep. My sister's growing four trees upstairs right now, actually. Nice. In the house. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Sounds like something I would do too. So tell me, I don't know. Grow trees in the house. Little mini bonsai trees. Mm -hmm. Some of those, nice. Yeah. yeah, I remember when I was, uh, when I was first out of college and I lived in an apartment. I uh, I could I think I had like twenty five flower pots on my on my balcony, uh -huh. and uh, I'm pretty sure I was very unpopular with people who lived below me, <laughs> but because uh, it drip, right? right? But you know you gotta have it. Actually, I'm not very funny. Funniest thing about me, I'm not very good at house plants. Okay, terrible. I have one outside my office right now, and they they the guys that I work with moved it out of my office because they said if they didn't, I was just going to kill it. Oh my so God. It's now outside <laughs> and they help me water it. <laughs> I was just about to ask you, what are some plants to take care of? So <laughs> yeah, outside plants, bring it on. Inside plants, I'm out. Oh, okay. I don't have a single inside plant inside my house. That's my favorite. But that's, that's so, that's so, I mean, you know, grow more plants, you know, learn more names by them, learn how they work. That's just, that'll get you where you need to go too. But there's really good, uh, Really good stuff in, in growing vegetable gardens. You grow any herbs? Yeah, we grow a few herbs. We have this big tower that waters the plants for you. Oh, uh, and you there just you have to plant the seeds in this little dirt thing it comes with. Yep. A little hydroponic it's growth, maybe. That'd yeah. Be cool. huh. See the it's roots like, yeah, but it's like a big tower, like a really tall tower with like mm -hmm. this. This like huge thing of water. Uh huh. Yep. And it waters them daily. Nice. That's pretty cool. I know. Now you don't see that. That's what you need, Valentina. It's something that'll yeah, water. Yeah. I was just like, maybe I should get yeah. something like that, so it automatically waters, and I don't have to take. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, I have a question. So, huh? if you could pick any other job, what would you pick? Ooh, hmm. Any other job in the industry or just in in general? Um, in general. Hmm. You know, I probably would have ended up. I think I still would have ended up in something that like builds things or or produces things. So it probably would have ended up in construction or probably again something very non traditional, but um, <laughs> in something like that, I would guess. Because um, I like to see things created. Uh, it's the creative part of me, right? So I like to see things like come together and build together and, and, and rise up. I think that's why like maintenance even, like you get that a little bit with like when you clean up that site every week, it's like, oh, it's like you get a finished product. Does that makes sense? Mm -hmm. I really like that. So that's probably what I would have ended up in uh, outside of plants. But it's hard to imagine now something else without plants in it. That was a long time. <laughs> but good question. That's a very good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So, Leslie, let me ask you one, if I can. <laughs> See if I can ask a tough one here. Oh um, dear, they already did. I don't know how you're gonna beat those. I man. know. I've got a. I've got some, you know, big questions to live up to. But <laughs> no. <laughs> thinking about obviously, you know, the last couple months, COVID has changed um, a lot of how we do business in everything. Um, but for these young ladies, they're a few years out from, you know, getting into their career. So if you yep. can kind of look into your plant crystal ball, you know, what do you, what do you think the industry is going to look like in, you know, three or four years? Are there changes uh, that this, that the girls could be kind of mm -hmm. thinking about now, whether it be automation, whether it be, mm -hmm. you know, just more adaptation to some of the things we've been going through recently, but you know, what do you see for the industry as a whole and even greenscapes in the next few years? Yeah. No, definitely. That's definitely a good one. Good practicing, Justin. Um, so um, I would say that I do feel like um, the labor situation for the entire landscape industry, horticulture industry at large will greatly impact our future. Um, the availability of people to do the work um, is, is already, um, you know, a problem to be perfectly blunt about it. Um, you know, we, we feel like that that will be something in the future that is definitely more of a concern about, you know, are there more automated products that will come on the market? 
products that make less noise, products that are more efficient, products that move, make the work go faster. Um, you know, if it's automated mowers or if it's, you know, automation on, you know, driverless vehicles even. Um, Cause that's even a challenge for us sometimes is getting people who are, have a clean enough driving record um, to drive for us. You know, we have to drive vehicles down the road every, every day. And that's something actually, you know, as you guys coming into your careers is protect your driver's license. It is a big deal if you want to work in this industry. Um, you need that thing. And it seems like such a small thing now, but believe me, there's a lot of people who've made some choices that mean they actually can't drive for me, which limits their earning potential. It's bad. I feel really bad for them. But, and in some cases, um, on your driver's licenses, it's seven years before those things, those bad things can disappear as far as the insurance companies are concerned. So being able to like drive for me is, is a big deal, especially when we go to the landscape industry side of things. So that's definitely something. Um, but I do feel like that, you know, keeping things automated and making sure that um, you um, are staying on top of like new technologies. You know, I think water efficiency is going to be a bigger deal. Less emissions on equipment is going to be a bigger deal. Um, you know, new plants on the market, um, maybe plants that use less water, breeding, plants that need less pruning. You know, that'll be something that we'll be looking to. We use a lot of growth regulators now to kind of slow down the needs for pruning um, and reducing labor. I personally think that's the biggest thing that will impact change in the, in the green industry is, is availability of people to do the work. Um, it's definitely, but I think it's good in a way because it forces us to like adapt to change faster. The interesting thing about COVID, right, is it, you know, it kind of changed Greenscape holistically in that my accounting and accounting and HR teams, um, we moved them remotely, as well as our customer service team. Everybody who wasn't related to operations immediately worked from home in mid-March, started working from home in mid-March. They are still pretty much working from home um, and probably will be until next year. But what we did is it actually moved us to where they actually are going to stay remote permanently. Um, now, we, we do have an office in Cairn Village. They'll kind of maybe come in a day a week just to keep the connection of the team going because we really feel really firmly that we can't have that team connection remote. We've seen that loss. People don't have interpersonal relationships as well when everything is remote. And that's a big thing actually for you all. It's like, you know, take that time to have like in-person relationships with people. It's not good enough just to see your friends on the screen, right? You got to see them in person. Same thing happens in business. Um, but we figured out a way that moving forward where we can have them part remote, part in person. So even post COVID, we actually won't go back to doing business the way that we did it, you know, even, even as late as early March. Um, so I think that'll be impactful. And the ability to where technology pushes us really quickly, I think post COVID will be really interesting. I think that'll be something we'll see. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> and just as a follow up, again, we're obviously as an educational institution, you know, we're trying to prepare students to go into these industries, you know, what, what advice would you give someone that's, you know, in middle school or high school to prepare them, you know, from an academic standpoint or also yeah, extracurricular? I mean, what, what things would you yeah. ask them, recommend them to do to be ready to go in, you know, for employment? You know, I think uh, knowing really early on, um, you know, if you can start to make some decisions about your career early on, or at least try a lot of things and help decide, that helps give you some more uh, opportunities to be more specific in your extracurricular, which is always helpful. Um, but really working with your, you know, working on your people skills, which is joining clubs, being in different extracurricular activities is always good no matter which club it is, um, because it's getting you working as teams, problem solving, you know, those kinds of things are great. You know, um, getting to know, you know, do what you guys are doing now, which is working through these types of programs is awesome because you are getting knowledge that your peers didn't get, you know. They're at home playing a video game. You guys are actually learning something that'll help you later on, which is great. I and mean, video games are good too, but this is a, you know, have, having a good mix of a lot of different things is important. And you know, like I said, having getting outside, you know, learning what it's like to garden, like Liliana just talked about. You know, a lot of our work is outside, especially really early on in your career. So love being <laughs> love being outside. Um, if I could say anything to people, is that where we find people are most successful for Greenscape. They don't have to have come from the landscape industry necessarily, but they have to know what it's like to work outside. You know, today it's 95, 97 degrees outside. My guys are mowing grass, you know? 
they are planting trees. They are digging irrigation holes to come buck two out at one of our properties to fix a main line. I mean, they are out like working in it. And so go out and garden, you know, learn what it's like to work outside and make sure that's what you like to do. Um, yes. And we found that people, a lot of people really, really love it. And that's, and people actually come back to us because they're like, God, I'm so tired of sitting at a desk all day long. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, I mean, it's great, but you got to be able prepared to work in all weather. Um, and our guys don't mind it. They much prefer being outside than being inside. Even mm -hmm. if it's 97 degrees or, you know, 10 degrees, <laughs> they'd rather do that than be inside. And so I think, you know, grow plants, you know, have a flower pot on your back deck that you're in charge of, go with your parents to the garden center, um, you know, grow a vegetable garden, have one that's yours, experiment. I'm going to try this row with this kind of fertilizer. I'm going to try this row with this and play with it, you know, have fun, you know, do experiments, grow, grow hydroponically like Lily's doing with her tower. Um, go on field trips, go with your parents to the farmer's market, to the um, garden center, you know, to that roadside stand, <laughs> you know, learn about just anything you can see that exposes you to plants is always something that will help you with your career. And, um, you know, get, like in our industry, it's, you know, there's a lot of things to do with people. So work on your people skills, you know? Um, and we, yes, we do need to use things like math and English and <laughs> all those things I do still use. <laughs> so you do need to build those basic building block skills too. So you, know, you got to be able to write letters to customers and compose emails that are grammar specific and use math to determine how much to charge customer or how much labor you have to put in that plant. So you charge a fair price. Um, all skill sets that you're going to need later on. Do you work a lot outside with the plants or do you do more work on the business side of things? And the second question is, have you ever worked with animals or just with plants? Ah, good questions. Um, so my job now is a lot more, um, two things, people and, and then the, on the business, working on the business. So I spent a lot more time in front of this thing, this computer screen, um, than I ever did earlier on. But early on in my career, I was almost 100% outside. Um, and again, I have plenty of guys who are still outside today. That's what they've chosen. You know, my branch managers are still outside. You know, they're doing site walks. They might be helping guys prune something today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow they might be pitching in and working on, they might be working on the business side tomorrow. Um, oh, it's only in the very, very latter parts of my career that I've been a lot more focused on the inside. Um, and that's honestly a bad thing. I enjoy doing this part of it too. And as I've grown and gotten older and changed what I like to do, this is, feeds a different part of what I like to do every day. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, earlier on, it, yeah, I was, like I said, in the beginning of my snow story, I shoveled snow for three days. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I got back to the plants. It was all good again. Uh -huh. um, as far as the animal thing, I have not. Uh, my FFA program in high school was really focused on the horticulture side. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was in Mecklenburg County, not exactly, um, even though we were in the northern end of the county where it was a little bit more rural, it wasn't really much on the animal end. Um, you had to kind of cross in Iredell County, Lincoln County to get more into the animal side of things on the FFA program. So uh -huh. mine was pretty much, um, like I said, my dad runs a sheet metal fabrication company. So no animals at our house, well, outside of pets, no, no animals at our house, but um, I have a lot of friends who went that direction. Um, a lot of them who work either in dairy or poultry or extension or anything like that. And so I've had a good mix of different things. Um, I actually have a friend, right, a friend of ours right now who actually just got named the, I think she's the head of the Lake Wheeler Research Lab for NC State. And I think she does a little bit of everything now, right? <laughs> some of it's plants, some of it's growing corn, some of it's horticulture, oh. some of it's cows and chickens out there. I think she has a little, little bit of everything now. So there's lots of opportunities out there to kind of get even a combined career together. Just gotta uh -huh. look for the right, right moment in time and say yes. That's awesome. All right, we have a questions. Okay, so if we don't have any more questions, I'll be very respectful of your time, Leslie. Um, thank you so, so much for joining us today and talking a little more about your pathway and how you got to where you are today. So yes, thank you so much for joining us and letting us, well, sharing your story with us. Yeah. Really, really insightful and very inspirational. So thank you all for the opportunity. I love, I love that you guys are in the program and, and doing something extra with your your July Monday. I think that's awesome and shows that you guys are on the right path. And 
looking for all the right opportunities to say yes to things, right? Right. <laughs> grow, your careers, grow, your, grow the fun part of it too. Go, go, go places with, with some plants today and, and be outside. It's the best part about it. Awesome. Okay. Thank y'all so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you for your time. Definitely. Thank y'all. Have a good rest of your Monday. You too. Bye. 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 See y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all. Everyone have a good day. <laughs> you too.